what you're trying to essentially do is you're simplifying fitness for people who do not get the time, right? Yeah. And that is something very insightful to look at. Now, I would also like to get into, uh, you know, people who are really busy. And like you said, the, the people, the kind of people that you're training. Now, is there a way that people can sort of incorporate those very basic movements into their entire routine. For example, if you are a busy person, but you still go to the loo, you still pee, you still get up to, uh, you know, uh, get up and have a break. So for example, you put a, you design some cues into Mm -hmm. that and be like, okay, every time I'm going to pee, I'm going to do a (laughs) pull-up, right? That's just an example. Maybe you don't have a pull-up bar, but that's just an example. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's something which is like a very good thing which you brought up because uh, there was, a, I remember this one time where one of my clients, she had a project that was due and she did not have even like five minutes to just spare for anything. Like right. even food is something that she had in front of the desk. So what I would tell her was set up a timer for like half an hour or one hour timer every one hour, you, you stand up and just do 10 air squats that's mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. You know? because when you sit down for long hours like uh, there's a lot going on in your body you, like your hips start to get really stiff your knees uh. start to get stiff and just by standing up and doing air squats will help you pump blood to your lower body which will you know not mm-hmm. only help you with like strength it will also help you with you know your mobility so that is something which I would I would recommend, like doing air squats. Now, if you want to switch it up, if you know that your entire week is going to be busy, you can alternate with between upper body and lower body. So say Monday, you're working on your squats, you're working on your lunges. Tuesday, you can do something upper body. You can do you can do push-ups, you can do pull-ups, like you mentioned. Day three, you can do skipping. If you have a jump rope, every one hour, give yourself like hundred skips. You know, and similarly, you could pick Thursday as a core day. You could do crunches every one hour. So that if you build it up, so suppose if you're working for eight hours, and then you just do ten sit-ups every hour. That's eighty sit-ups at the end of the day. So right. that's that's the whole uh, magic or like beauty about compounding. You just like keep mm. it up. Yeah. Yeah. No wonder it's a seventh wonder. Of, uh, eighth wonder. Yeah, seventh wonder. Uh, yeah. compounding of yeah yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay no but this is interesting why because I, I think I get a feeling that people do not want to spend time uh, you know with fitness during their days is because maybe they are thinking that you have to dedicate a large portion of your time for fitness but yeah. you don't even have to do that you just have to like 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 we discussed you have to set up cues every 10 minutes you get up you do some push-ups or whatever you can do you can incorporate that in patches of your day you do not dead need to dedicate a part of your day uh, entirely so i i think that simplifies it well for them as well yeah. right so uh, so this was about time the other thing was about uh, the other thing was about cost maybe right so we discussed yeah. about that at length now if someone wants to set up a small their own personal gym at their home what is the basic equipment that is not that costly you know uh, some basic equipment that's powerful yet yeah. not costly that they can buy maybe and they can you know start with that maybe okay. maybe that yeah that, that's beautiful that you brought that up because ever since like COVID hit like it's been a year and a half since we yes have huh. to, like, stay indoors yeah. Even I've switched my workouts to indoor workouts because uh, I've been training at the gym for three years now, and imagine like it's it's like a big shift. Mm-hmm. So if someone like to, for the simplest, like if someone's at a beginner level and they really want to start, I would the first thing that I would recommend is to get a skipping rope or yeah. a speed rope. This is something which is very simple. We've all done it growing up, and if you have never tried it, this is the best time to learn how to skip. <laughs> the second equipment is for a little bit between beginner and intermediate is to get lightweight dumbbells. A mm-hmm. pair of dumbbells is like one of the most versatile versatile uh, equipments that you can own with which you can do a ton of movements. Like you name it, like you could do weighted squats, you could do glute bridges, you could do some upper body movements like shoulder press, floor press to work on your arms and even deadlifts. So that's the second one. The third one is a resistance band. So yeah. the resistance band is one of the most like fun movements that you can do for your lower body, especially. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a lot of like monster walks that you can do and 
uh, to activate your glutes and your hamstrings. Amazing. Uh, that's the third one. The fourth one is uh, a pull-up bar, like you mentioned earlier. That is something which is which I would recommend for someone who um, is into fitness and who wants to start working on either their hanging knee raises or their pull-ups. A lot of like gymnastic movements involved mm -hmm. with that. So these are like the four equipments that I would highly recommend someone. Uh, right. No, that's wonderful because that will sort of lower that bar at least that barrier for them, right. and they can start anytime. Uh, this is good. This is good because I myself set up my own personal gym, bought a pair of dumbbells, and it was not at all costly. And I can so get. So I have a kettlebell, and it didn't cost me more than like I think it just cost me seven hundred. So five kg ke kettlebell, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, from Amazon. Then I have these five, five kgs dumbbell, a pair of dumbbells. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember how much that cost me, but definitely not a lot. Yeah. And I have, a, uh, like you said, resistance band, that uh, 2.5 uh, kg plate. Uh, I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's a plate. It's a 2.5 yeah. kg plate. Yeah. And I, I have a skipping rope. So th I think well, that... Basically <laughs> <most of the laughs> <things>. <laughs> yeah, so that is really helpful because at the end of the workout, I feel I feel very empowered. So, yeah. yeah, and it was not at all costly. I bought them at the spaces of, at several spaces of time, but then definitely. That really, uh, like, like, didn't a, really. Simulating equipment. Yes. Instead of like, most people that do this, I've seen people do this during uh, the lockdown, they invest everything into uh, equipment and then they have this beautiful home gym, but then they end up like feeling demotivated because they're not training. You know? Yeah. So they're not used to training. So I feel like, Taking it slow, like, okay, maybe starting with a pair of dumbbells, okay, yeah. working out for at least two weeks with that and then feeling confident that, okay, I'm doing good, then investing in another one, you know, so yes. slow can also be like a really good motivate, motivating factor.